everybody so welcome back to this channel so in this video we're going to go into IGCS computer science chapter 9 databases so a database is an organized collection of data so what it means here is that it is a place a storage to store all the data that is required in a program so so far in chapter 7 and 8 we learned how to write our codes how to create a program from scratch so in this chapter we are going to learn about how do we store the data that is needed by all these programs that we create. So in a database, you can organize data in a table format, which is which looks like that. They, they are horizontally um, rows and also vertical rows. So some of the usages of databases would be the student and examination record at schools, where you store the student name, their age, and also um, their house they belong in. And um, in hospital, it will be used to store patient records, um, again, their names and what um, medical history they have. And in customers and the bank will be um, how much saving do they have in their bank account. So here are the other example of booking and reservation record at railways and airports, employee records at office. So if you think about all the big application nowadays, they all have databases, um, for instance, um, TikTok. They have a database of where all the videos are stored and how many likes they have plus comments. So these are some of um, the usages of databases. And now we want to move on into some important terms that are used in database. So by understanding these terms, you manage to understand database in a deeper level. So first of all, we need to understand what table is. A table is very much like a spreadsheet where you have columns and also rows. Um, the, this entire thing here is called a table. All right, um, data is entered in a tabular format, horizontally and vertically. So we also have um, the, another keyword known as the view, which is also known as the column in a database. It is also a title given to a piece of data. So if you look at um, in a view, they basically only store one type of data, instance in this age this is the age field obviously it will store the age of the a person and um that's view and we also have the record term which is used to store a particular instance of data so a record is a row in a database table a collection of views in the table for a specific person or an object so if you can see this specific particular record it has multiple fields on it a complete data so um, next up is, this is very important term known as the query. A query allows users to find full records or records with specific field in database using certain criteria. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you an example to further illustrate that. So imagine that this is the table. You have um, fields, you have rows here. And what if you only want um, a certain part of the data? You, you, for instance, you only want to the records of students who are 11 years old. So what we can do is that we can write something like a programming language, but it's not, it's called structured query language, some lines of codes. And then um, once we run this code, it will only show you data, which is records that, are, that meets your criteria. In this case, which is students who are age 11. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the later part of the video. Just know that query is an, another important term for database. So last but not least, we also have the data type. This data type is very similar to what we learned in Python or in pseudocode. So each view here, ID, first name, last name, age, and house, they all have um, a certain type of data. For instance, ID, we represent ID in numbers, which is known as integer and database. And first name, obviously, is going to be in text, um, which is also spring, string and Python, age, numeric, house, char. So I'm, we're going to go through that one by one. First of all, the first data type that we learn is text and alphanumeric. It's basically a number of characters equivalent to the string and Python. And character, again, we learned this in Python, which also characters, but it's also just a single character and with a few size of want. And followed by Boolean um, is either yes or no or true or false value depending on the database language you use. Um, yes and no. 
um, it can be used to store data that is that only has two outcomes. For instance, um, gender, male or female, or um, employed or unemployed. A boolean value will be used for that. An integer will be whole number, um, where the same integer we learned in Python, real decimal numbers, um, 1.23. So this is an example of a real number. Date and time, which is used specifically to store date or time in a few. All right. So that's data type. It's important to know that because when you create a database, if let's say you assign the age field to have the integer data type, you can only enter numbers into that database and it prevents others from entering wrong data into the database. So um, let's move on to another term, which you need to know when it um, learn about databases, which is database management system. Um, in short, we call them DBMS. It's an interface which acts as an interface between the user and the database. So now we have the database and we have the user. So what a DBMS does is that it's essentially a software that allows the user to interact with the database. So it's like a middleman that acts between the user and the database. So that's called a database management system. And let's go to the two types of databases available. First of all, we have the flat file database. Um, this type of database only have one single table of data. Remember, table is um, something like that. It has rows and columns. So in this flat file database, they can only store one table. And the database is not related to any other table or databases. So they are a standalone database. And some of the disadvantage of this um, type of database, first of all, is that data duplication can occur. So this means that in our database, um, you might have to create multiple databases that, um, that has the possibility of storing the same data. So remember, data needs storage. So if you store similar data, um, you're basically duplicating the data, which is not very good for, for a company or for a program. And also data redundancy will also occur in multiple locations. And what data redundancy is, is basically how you store the same data in, in different databases. So for instance, in my table here, student data table, you're storing the age data here. So in the flat file database, um, this age view can be stored in multiple other databases, which is not what we want. And that's called data redundancy the storing of the same data in multiple locations. So a better alternative to flat file database would be, oh, okay, another would be a relational database where this database has multiple tables and the tables can be linked so that user can work on complex data structure having multiple tables. And I'll show you an example of how they work, but let's move on. A relational database does not allow data duplication, which means you can't store the same data in different places, same table, and it's more efficient, efficient and consistent than a flat file database. So you might feel confused, how can a database have two tables? So let me show you. And this is an example of a relational database where it has the student data table and also the student result table. All right, you can see that student data tables store specifically um, the data of a specific student, such as their first and last name, age, and also house. Um, whereas in a student result table, it's more specific. It only stores the student's result in a particular subject, for instance, math, history, English, and science. So one benefit of splitting um, tables is so that instead of have a big table, we separate them into multiple tables that store specific things. So if we want to retrieve certain information, we can do it very efficiently because um, the table size is very small, all right? And in a relational database, one key term that you need to know here is called um, the primary key. So if you look at this case, we have a student data and student result table, and both tables here, they have a special field called the ID field, in which um, this ID field is unique, right? And also they are important in helping us to recon recognize which record it is, right? So it does define the records of each student and this specific field is defined as the primary key for the table. So in our instance here, the ID field 
is our primary key. It is a unique view that allows the user to identify a record. A record means a row, and every record in a primary key field must be unique. So what it means here is that in this ID column, there cannot be multiple, let's say, 001 value in this view. Otherwise, the database will throw you an arrow because ID has to be unique. Only one 001 here can exist in the database. And it's useful in helping us to identify um, a record. So um, for, for instance, in your student data table here, what if we have two person that has the same name known as J Chow, and they are both 11 years old and they're both in the house, yellow house. And how do we differentiate who, which person is which? And this is when primary key comes into, um, this is when primary key is important. They help us identify a person even if they have the same data, all right? All right, so, um, so this is just a recap on what we talked about just now, which is queries. And now I'm gonna show you how to write a query code, which is SQL. SQL is a very popular language and database, and it's mainly used for relational database. It contains statements which are used to retrieve or modify data from the database. So um, to, to help you better understand how to use SQL, I use this platform called the SQL Playground. And I'm gonna show you how um, this thing work. So now we learn about database. So if I were to run this code here, um, select everything. So this thing means everything from this student info table, which is a spreadsheet that I just uploaded into this platform. And if we were to press the run button here, I'm gonna run it. You can see that um, this is a database, all right? It uh, is a database with the student ID, first name, last name, age, phone number, nationality, house, and also points, um, which basically means how many points they have. So this is when SQL comes into handy. Um, what if now I don't want the program to show me all the records, I mean, of all the students here. Um, instead, I only want students who are older than 13 years old. And we can do that by writing appropriate SQL language. I'm gonna copy this. So again, the syntax here is that select uh, means what are the fields that we are selecting. So in this star icon means I want to select all fields. I want every field to be shown. And from, from the key read means um, from which table we want to load the info from, okay? So if I only want students who are older than 13 years old, and what I can do is just to add this where statement. It's a syntax um, where um, you need to do um, spell it exactly right, where age is, for instance, older than 13. You can use the, the age column, the name of the column, and use a comparator operator, more than 13. So if I were to run this code here, the SQL code, and the table that I will receive here is that right all the students here that are shown they are older than 13 years old because i have filled out and this is what um how sql is so effective you just write a few lines of codes and then um, the program will filter out all the relevant information for you all right so this is the first statement that we learned the where statement is when we put a condition into our sql code so that we the computer know what information to be filtered out and so uh, what if I want, let's say in the second line here, they said select only students who are 13 years old, same, but I want them to be ordered by age. So instead of showing the 18 years old student first, I want them to show the younger student first. And this is another syntax, which is in your syllabus, which is known as ordered by, ordered by, or by what um, few? So you just enter by age. So if you write this order by age, you are going to get the same database, all right, the same database as before, but then now the table is arranged ascendingly, all right, from 14 to 18 years old. And what if now you said, I want it to be in descending order? That's another keyword where you need to add just the DSC keyword. And if you run this code, you can see that um, now the table is arranged descendingly based on the age view. So um, this is the three keywords we, we have learned so far. The where clause allows us to put in a condition 
ordered by help us to arrange the table and also followed by the essay stands for descending order if you want your data to be ordered descendingly so i'm going to delete this everything and now the two the, another two functions that we need to learn here is how do we count for instance um, count the number of students here let's say this is my um, database i'm going to re de delete everything and let's return to the original database and now what if you said i want to count the number of students in a database which has the house green all right if you think about it this is quite a hard task if you were to do it manually you might need a few hours and it might not be very accurate um, and for, um but very fortunately we have this sql language so what we can do in the first step if you want to achieve this task is that we first filter out all the rows in which the student have house equal to green so i'm going to write where house is equal to green all right so when i run this code i'm going to show see that see all the students who are in the greenhouse all right it's a small database so we know that from this table we have one two three four five six seven seven students who are from the um, greenhouse but what if i don't want to see this table at all i just want to count all you can do is just to use a count function count function followed by a parenthesis and then you just put this um, star inside so this is the car function. So if I, when I run this code, it will calculate, it will just return the number of rows, which is in the table, which is pretty cool. All right. So if you, if you have a database that has a million rows, you won't want to count them manually. You can just write your code in SQL and then it will return the number of students. And it's pretty cool. So that's another function, the count function. So um, let's return everything. So I'm going to, we are going to move on to the next function the last one so if i run this code we got the same table back so now um the next question that we need to solve is count the total number of points which the student have so if we looked at this database we can see that um, these are the number of points they have and what we can do to you know sums up all the value they have and it's very simple so i'm going to copy this to the bottom and all we need to do is that we are going to now learn use the sum function sum followed by a parenthesis and what what few do we want to sum them up so in this case it's points so i'm going to just put some points from our tables that's pretty easy and when i run this code it will return the sum of points from the table so it's pretty much like magic but um it's basically just programming language and that's the another function we learned which is the sum function and um to make things more challenging what if i want the total points that the red house student have well all i can do is just add where the house is equal to red and if so i will have gotten the total number of points that the red house has so sqr is a very popular language um, even though for today we only learned a few syntax, but in the real world there are tons of syntax that can do amazing things because nowadays all the databases are so huge. Imagine all the transactions that happen in the supermarket that would need a very huge database to handle and we want fast and effective way to get data that we need. So I'm just going to go through SQL in the PowerPoint to, to just help you revise. So first of all, if um, I would use, we have the select keyword, um, which means what are the fields that we want to select. And if you put star, it means you want to select all the fields that you want from, um, from is which tables you are referring to. So to show you, okay. So instead of what we have learned just so far is just to select everything. And if let's say in your query language, you only want to select the first name column. You can just write select first name. All right, let's say you want to select the H, sorry. Select the H. When you run this code, you are only going to get the H view. All right, so what if you want to select um, the house? You can also write select house and return only the house view. So this is when select comes into control. What do you, view do you want to select specifically? And followed by the where clause is when you want to specify a condition, you only get 
records for which the condition is true. So in this case, this is what we did just now. Select everything, all the views, star, from this table where the student age is greater than 13. All right, and then you'll get your result. And you can use the order by age clause to, you know, um, retrieve information in ascending orders. If you want it to be in descending order, you just add DESC at the back, which is pretty straightforward. And the two functions that we have showcased just now is the count function as also the sum function. They are aggregate functions which is used to perform mathematical operation, counting and addition. So in this case, we want to count only students who are from, you know, the house Xu Green, Stanford Green. So in this case, um, let's say this is your student info table and you ask a question, can you count for me how many of these students are from Green House? So in, instead of counting them manually, you can write the query language and then boom, the answer, the, the answer tree will be written. And the sum function is very similar, but instead of counting the number of instances, it sums the attributes, um, the field up. So for instance, if you have this student info table, um, which has how much money the student has paid. So you want to calculate how much in total these students have paid. So what you can do is just write, select sum, followed by the column name, the few name from this, and then boom, the answer 900, 100 plus 100 plus 200, everything, 900 will be written. And this is how we write SQL language, which is just an introduction. So if you are interested, feel free to check it out yourself. There are a lot of online classes out there. And in, last but not least, these are the useful operators that you can use. So in the WHERE clause, so far we have only used the equal to or greater to, but these are um, everything, a lot of things that you can use, like the and or or not that we use in Python. So that's the end of this video. Um, it's a short one, but hopefully in this chapter, you know that um, the important terms in databases and also how to use the SQL query language and also the two types of database we have, the flat file database and also um, relational database. So thank you so much for watching. Hope that this video helped you. Um, thank you so much.